National actress and singer Annika Noni Rose. She's visiting the country to announce a few projects that she's going to be embarking on this year. The star is well known for her iconic roles, such as playing Laura Robinson in the hit film Dream Girls, alongside Jennifer Hudson and Beyonce. Also voicing Tiana, the first black Disney princess in The Princess and the Frog, and currently seen on our screens in The Quad, playing the role of Dr. Eva Fletcher. Annika is uh, familiar with the concept having spent months here in 2009 in Botswana shooting the award-winning miniseries The Number One Ladies Detective Agency alongside Jill Scott, Idris Elba, Desmond Dube, David Oyelowo and uh, John Carney. She's here in studio with us this morning to share a little bit more about her visit. But first, let's take a look at this clip from one of her works. You'll hear things like she knew him, she must have wanted it. A misunderstanding. These these things happen. She invited him in. What did she expect was gonna happen? Ma'am, are you sure you didn't suggest? One sip of wine. I don't drink. The rapist doesn't have to be a stranger to be legitimate. Someone you never saw. But if you've been in public with him, dance, one dance. Kissed him goodbye, lightly. With closed mouth. Pressing charges will be as hard as trying to keep your legs closed while five fools try to run a train on you. These men, friends of ours, who smile nice and stay employed and Take us out to dinner. Lock the door behind you, and we are left with the scars. Sure. Right. What a powerful piece. Here is a lady herself. It is so lovely to have you in studio. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you very Good. much. What is it like watching yourself? You know, I, I, <laughs> I haven't seen that in so long, and I got sort of teary, and then I felt silly because I'm getting teary watching myself. So... <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing silly about it. I was watching it and thinking, this is a powerful piece. Thank and I mean, I, I suppose you never really get to sit back and in silence watch yourself performing, do you? No, you know, I could, but I, I generally don't. And lately, I, I watched the show, my TV show, because I'm live tweeting. But I've stopped watching things, not because I'm not proud of them. I don't think that they're good. I just want them to be able to live on their own yeah. without criticizing myself or having a feeling about it you know yeah which is which is quite interesting it really is I suppose most people in the industry and most people that I've spoken to feel very much so the same way yeah. they they sort of stay away from watching themselves and focus on their craft rather um welcome to South Africa thank you although you've been here for a while haven't you how long have you been here now Oh, no. I've only been here about three days now. Only three days? <laughs> I'm very sleepy. So, so I've, I've kind of just seen what you've been up to in three days. No yes. wonder. I feel like you've been here a bit longer. Yes. Uh, you were at the Polo enjoying... I was. How was that? Did you enjoy I that? I loved it. <laughs> I've never been to a Polo match before. I thought... How exciting. The music was so dramatic. It was like Star Wars. Like I felt like a stormtrooper <laughs> coming through the field. It was magnificent. The horses were beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to do that again. It was so much fun. It's the first time you've ever been to the polo. Yes. I mean, did you actually watch it? I mean, I have yes. to ask that question because I've been and I've been a part of the social vibe and I've actually forgotten that there's horse racing or polo happening. I think that it's easy at times to get sort of distracted by the things that are going on. But those horses are so beautiful magnificent, and magnificent yeah, yeah. that I 
I was always drawn back to it. <laughs> I love it. So listen, I need to I need to talk. Let's get this out the way. I need to talk about your Twitter handle because yes. you you were telling me that you live tweet and you do everything. But yes. the, the Twitter handle is doesn't need to see your penis. Yeah. Okay, help me out here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's a lot going on in Hollywood specifically right now wow. with the Weinstein uh, drama, which is not a good word because it makes it sound small, but that's not really what I mean. Yeah. Uh, um, and a lot of men that we now know, because women are speaking out, having done awful things. Um, just awful things. I, I, it seems like there's a spate of men who think that women want to see their nether regions unasked for, not in a relationship, just in an abusive manner. And I, and I think that, you know, who does that? Yeah. Who walks up on somebody and just pulls their pants open? So I'm just making it very clear that we will never have a misunderstanding. <laughs> this is not what I need from you. Yeah. And I expect you to act in a respectful, respectable manner. You know, so many people talking, and I mean, I was sitting and watching the Oscars last night. That's why I'm a little bit, uh, I'm very tired. I, you're tired for different reasons. I'm tired <laughs> all because of my own fault and sitting up and watching the Oscars and this whole Me Too campaign yeah. and, and this whole movement. And, and so many of the, the women saying that they feeling the seismic shift taking place in Hollywood and in their industry and that it's working and it's wonderful. Is it really though? I mean, what do you, what do you think? Well, it, it's working to an extent. I think that time will tell what really happens and, and how we change the way we um, allow people to behave. Um, so I think it's very visible right now, and I think it, it'll be important to continue to uh, decide that there is work behavior and there is respectable behavior. Um, and when people step across that line, they should not have the platform then anymore to be uh, on top of people, for lack of a better term, not trying to have a pun at all. Um, so it's, it'll be about what happens as we, as we go along in time uh, and, and how we change the way the room is, is built. Uh, I yeah, think. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I, I think it's a, it's a very strong movement, and I'm hoping that, that a lot comes out of it. It filters down to every industry. Because it absolutely does. It, 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 isn't, it isn't just in Hollywood, but I suppose with Hollywood having a voice and that industry being so visible, that's why yes. it's, it's getting the attention that it does. And it needs to be visible. Indeed. You know what I mean? So it's Indeed. good. That, that these things are, were being, are being brought out and being talked about. It's terrible that people had to go through them. Yeah. But it's important to know that this happens in the hotel industry with maids. Oh, yeah. This happens in, I'm sure, the news industry with anybody who feels like they have to be beholden to someone else is possibly in a position to be taken advantage of. Yeah, I love it. So hashtag everybody uh, doesn't need to see your penis. That's our new, <laughs> that's our new <laughs> trending topic for now. <laughs> so let, let's talk a little bit about your career because we don't have too much time. But I mean, Dream Girls. That was a dream, wasn't it? It was fantastic. I and mean, to work alongside the, the likes of Beyonce and, and Jennifer Hudson, I mean, what was that like for you? Well, you know, the interesting thing is that I was coming to do what I actually did. So I came from Broadway. Yeah. So for me, it was me doing what I do now with a camera on me. So it wasn't about, you know, who I was standing next to because I was coming from my own this was your, uh, you, you felt place. so comfortable there. This that is was where what I you lived. did. This is what I did. Oh. So what was really wonderful about it was us really having a good work rapport and enjoying each other as we created this thing. Because That's you right. had two people who Jennifer was brand new and known only as a singer. Beyonce it was world known, but not as much as now yeah. and is at the top of her game. But they were both learning something new. In that, in that situation. So we all just sort of came together and had a really wonderful time. And we were really lucky too because the voices melded so seamlessly and you can't fake that. That's not something you can even plan. It was really, really great. Yeah, I can just imagine. I mean, it must have been something so special. I mean, you've worked with some of the most amazing men in Hollywood as well. I mean, besides the women that we've spoken to. And if we can have a moment of silence for Idris Elba, is he? Is he <laughs> I, I mean, I, I saw him when he played Madiba and he is as gorgeous as I think he is. And he's an amazing actor, isn't he? He does not, he's not painful on the eye. He's not painful he really on the isn't. eye at all. I like the way you said and that. <laughs> <laughs> I think what Jamie I like, Fox as well. <laughs> what I like the most about Idris is that he's silly. 
And people don't know that he's silly because he's so handsome that people get caught up in that. But he doesn't take himself that seriously, so you can really have fun with him. That's so good. Um, and that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, I mean, we feel very special uh, affiliation towards him because he did play Madiba and he did a very good job. Mm -hmm. Not many people can get the South African accent right. Yeah, it's, it's not a big a, one. It's not an easy sound. If, if, you're, if your ear is not used to hearing it, it's not an easy thing. No, no, it isn't. It really, really isn't. I mean, you are here. Why are you here? Let, let's talk about that. <laughs> Let's Why are I'm you sure, here? I mean, you didn't just come for the polo, <laughs> did you? I'm loving the conversation. Well, you must be doing something big here. I did not. I have a television show coming on BET called The Quad. Wow. We're in our second season. I play Dr. Eva Fletcher, who is a very type A personality. She's the president of a college. She is it's a sort of fish out of water story. She comes from a very different environment. She knows nothing of historically black colleges. And she's learning slowly to appreciate this culture that really isn't a part of her growing up culture. Um, and she's also a very flawed woman. She's a woman who, you know, has dirt underneath her skirt. And that's sort of a really lovely thing to play. I think that women, we either play very strong or very soft or, you know, um, or the, the, the child or the whore. The, the, we have these the boxes that we're stuck in. And she's somebody who is, is very human, which is very exciting. Fantastic. Well, we are so happy to have you here. I wish I had more time with you, but I Thank don't. You. But I am so glad that we got to just touch the surface with you and enjoy your presence Thank here. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic time in South Africa. Good luck with the show. And uh, I know that everyone is already loving you. So you. Uh, just bask in it. International actress and singer Annika Nani Rose, who is known very much so for her stage work on Broadway, uh, including her 2004 Tony Award for Best Performance by a Featured Actress in a Musical as Emmy. Ah, uh, gosh, I hope this right. Thibodeau, thank you. And Caroline for change or change. Thank you so much for being thank with you. us. Thank you for having All me. All right, let's take a break. Oh, uh, gosh, we got more.